In this video we're going to look at some three-dimensional functions and we're going to graph what we call level curves of the 3D function. So as we go along I'll explain what this means. But basically let's let's assume that we want to look at a three-dimensional function. What that means is we could be looking at a function such as the one right here where Q we can imagine that Q is the amount of output that we might get the number of cars or shoes or something like that from two different inputs X and Y. Input X might be something like labor and input Y might be machines that we need to make this product. So the amount of output is some function of the amount of labor raised to the one-third power times the amount of machines raised to the two-thirds power for example. Now what does this function look like? Let me bring up a little three-dimensional representation of this particular function here so we can look at it. So as what's going on in this graph here, I'm straining my poor little computer to its limits as I send this around and try to record video at the same time, is here's the x-axis down here and the y-axis let me spin it around a little more there, is going up the side, the left side here is the Y and, and the X is over here. And as we use more labor and as we use more capital or whatever X and Y are, the value of this function gets larger and larger as we go up and up and up this hill. So this, you, some people call this the Z-axis going up into space tells us how much output we get for various combinations of <clears throat> the two inputs X and Y. Now what I have drawn here on the surface of this hill are what we call level curves. Level curves, this purple level curve here, looks like it's at about 30 units of output. So what this is telling us is all the various combinations of different amounts of workers. Toward this side we have a lot of workers, 35 or 40, and we're not using very much machines for example. But as we move in this direction we're moving towards less workers and more machines, but anywhere around this little purple curve we're going to be producing about 30 units of output. In order to really understand this principle and to work with these curves in a, a little bit easier way if you don't have a fancy computer program to use, a lot of times what we do is we just look at these curves in two dimensions. So what we do is we turn this graph on its edge and, and we look at it from the very top. So I'm going to turn, attempt to turn this graph. So we're looking at it from the top. Well, I'm straining my computer here. This this might just not work out, but you can see below here what I'm talking about. Uh, what I've done is projected these level curves down onto a flat surface. What I want to show you is how we can draw those level curves by hand, and by doing it by hand a couple of times, I think you can get to where you can understand what's going on quite a bit better. So what we're going to attempt to do here in this little grid is to draw a couple of level curves, maybe we'll just draw one because this takes a good amount of time, for this function. So for example, suppose we wanted to draw a curve representing all of the different combinations of X down here on the X axis and Y on the Y axis that will give us four units of output, for example. So Q, the, the value of the function is 4. We're saying, I'm telling you that's going to be 4. And what I want you to tell me are, and make a graph of, are all the various combinations of X and Y that will give me 4 units of output. So how do we do that? Well, we're not actually going to solve this for every single value of X and Y, but we're going to get a good representation of different values of X and Y. We're going to plot them on this graph and we're going to get one of those curves that we saw in that graph that I showed you before. 
Now, how do we go about doing that? Well, the easiest way is to go ahead and solve this equation for the number of units of output equals x to the one-third times y to the two-thirds power. We could solve it for either, either x or y. I'll solve it for y. You could do either way, but I'll solve it for y here. So if we want to solve this equation for y, what are the various steps we'd want to go through? We'll just do this real quickly. Well, I'd want to move this x to the one-third over to this side. So we'll divide both sides of this equation by x to the one-third. So we're going to have, let me just do this over here. I'm, I'm using a new, well, it's actually quite an old tablet computer here to do this. And I'm, I'm learning as I go. Let me try some of the little tools here. Let's see. I'm trying to circle the x to the one-third so I can move it. It doesn't look like that's actually going to work for me. Okay, so I'll just write, rewrite this. 4 divided by x to the one-third equals y to the two-thirds. Now, what are we going to do to solve this for y? In order to get y by itself, we need to raise the y to the two-thirds to the three-halves power. If so, what we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to the three-halves power. Why? Because when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply the exponent. And two-thirds times three-halves equals one. So we're just going to end up with y on the right-hand side. And what we have to do is raise everything on the left-hand side to the three-halves power. Now, three-halves is just 1.5. So we can simplify this, and we can distribute the 3 halves to the 4 and the x to the 1 third, and we can get something that looks like this. 4 to the 3 halves will be on the top. So 4 to the 3 halves is just actually 8. If you put 4 to the 1.5 in your calculator. And then on the bottom, we're going to have, let me move this do this over here, we're going to have x to the one-third raised to the three halves. Multiply those exponents together, and one-third times three halves is one-half. So this simplifies down nicely to the square root of x, which is x to the one-half. I'll write it that way. 8 over the square root of x equals y. Now if we want to graph this level curve, Let's just make a little table here of various values of x we could plug in and the corresponding values for y. Now on this axis over here, this little uh, Cartesian grid, I have x's going from 0 to 10 roughly. So let me just pick a few values of x that will plug into this equation to get y. So I'll plug in the value 1, 2, uh, 4, 6, and 9. Just picking five values out of a hat there. Now, if you want to participate, get a piece of paper, draw a little grid like this, or get a piece of graph paper and label it, and pause the video now and plug in these five values of x into this equation, 8 over the square root of x equals y, and get the corresponding y values. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph them over here on this coordinate system. So you pause the video, and I'll do the same and fill in this table. All right, so I've filled in the values of x and y, just plugging x into this function here. And now what we want to do is graph these points to make what we call a level curve. And again, to reiterate, all we're doing here is mapping out the combinations of x and y that when you plug them into this formula will give you the value of 4 as the output. So it's a way of collapsing a three-dimensional graph into just kind of one slice of that graph that we might be interested in. So let's just plot these points. Uh, x is 1, y is 8. So there's x is 1, y is 8. So there's uh, one point on our graph. Um, x is 2. So for example, if we use two laborers, we'll need 5.66 
thousand machines or something like that. So two and 5.66 would put us somewhere in this neighborhood. And four and four is an option there. And six people, 3.27 million machines perhaps. So six and 3.27 would be right around here. And nine, 2.66. So these things are substitutes. The more of one you use, the less of the other that you actually have to use. And so with these five points, we can get a, a pretty decent idea of what this curve is going to look like. So I'm just going to sketch a curve that goes through these points here as nicely as I can. So that's not a bad job there for a level curve. And again, we might want to label this. This is a level, level curve for Q equals 4. Well, let's see. Let me do it over here where we can actually see it. Q equals 4. And we could make another level curve here for uh, q equals 6 or q equals 8 or q equals 10. And what we would get if we did that would be you know, a series of different curves that are, that are going to be kind of roughly parallel to each other. Whereas we go up in this direction, we're going to be get using more resources to produce and so we're getting more and more and more output as we we go up to the northeast corner there. Now a couple other things we might want to do with a level curve like this, especially this is something that we do in intermediate microeconomics quite a bit, is we're interested to know what the slope of this curve is. Now, of course, this is not a straight line. If it was a straight line, the slope would be constant everywhere along the line. But it's not a straight line, so that means that the slope is going to be changing. It's going to be different in different places. And so, for example, the slope up here in this region is very steep, and the slope down here in this region is very flat. So let's calculate two slopes, and we can talk about what it means. And interpret it. So, for example, at this point right here, let's let's try to imagine if we were to draw a tangent line. A tangent line is just a point that a line that touches the curve at one point. And I'm not doing a very good job of drawing a line that just hits at one point because I've covered up a a lot of the curve there. But let's just imagine that this line is close to what we're interested in. We want to know what the slope of this line is, right? So if we look at that line, let me draw a black line here that's a little bit better. Only touches at one point there. What's the slope? Well, just like any line, we need to pick two points on that line and calculate the rise over the run. And so I'm going to pick this point right here because I know that's at 0, 10. And I'll pick this point here because it comes close to going through the point 3, 3. The rise between those two points is minus 7, and the run is 3. So at that point, the slope is minus 7 over 3. What does that mean? Well, that means that in this region, if we're producing 4 units of output, remember the value of the function is 4, if we wanted to use more x and less y, this 7 thirds tells us the ratio that we're substituting between those things in this region. That if I want to stay on this curve where I'm still producing 4 units, and I want to move in this direction by using more x, it tells us that for each time we move over x, we have to move down a certain number of y. In, in other words, it tells us if we want to use three more workers that we can give up seven machines, if that's what x and y represent. So the rate of use three more workers, you can get rid of seven machines. Let's see what's different over in this region. Let me use my highlighter over here and let me try to sketch out a line that looks like it might just touch this curve at one point there. Now, of course, we see that this line is much flatter. And in, in this region, we're already using a lot of people, and we're not using many machines if x is people. Let me just write that there, that x is people, labor. 
and y is machines, the slope is very flat. What's the slope of that line? Well, again, let me try to pick two points, and let's pick that one and say that one. The slope is down one over one, two, three, four, five. Down one over five. So its slope is minus one over five. What does this slope tell us? Well, it means over here where we're already using a lot of people and not a lot of machines, that if I want to use one fewer machine, down one, I'm going to have to make up for that by using five more people. One, two, three, four, five, if I want to still produce those four units of output. Which is the best combination along this line? That's something that we'll talk about later. But what we're going to want to do is find the way of producing four units of output along this curve that's the cheapest way to do it. And that's going to depend on what the price of input x is compared to the price of input y.